Oh, I need to I need, I need to ask us a question. How many times did Jesus ascend into the heavens after his resurrection? Can you prove that from the Bible? Your answer. How many times did Jesus ascend into heaven after his resurrection? With scriptural backing, Apostle Arame proved that Jesus ascended to heaven more than three times after his resurrection. Please watch this message all the way to the end and do not forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you can stay up to speed to get more content on our YouTube channel. And also, if you are arguing in the comment section, please argue according to biblical provision. So, there were many times that Jesus ascended. If you read your Bible, read it very carefully, you will find that he had no dwelling place on earth. He, he couldn't give his, an address to anybody after his resurrection anymore. But he had a lifeline of 40 days to sum up the full implication of that which is dead, his burial, his resurrection had created so that the functionaries that will be saddled with the responsibility of extending the frontiers of the kingdom of God will be equipped with the full implication of what has shifted in the realm of the spirit. Are you there? So, he gives them appointments. And each appointment that he gives them is an occasion, an opportunity for him to unveil breaking news in heaven. Such breaking news that is supposed to influence their operation upon the face of the earth. So he comes with breaking news. Um, I hope you know that originally the Bible did not exist in chapters and verses. It was broken into chapters and verses 100 years after the compilation was available. In fact, if you see the Torah, the, an original Torah, you will not even see punctuation marks in it. It's a perpetual continuum. And that's how God speaks to you. That's how God deals with you. He doesn't deal with you and put a full stop. Are you there? All right, so let us imagine, let us try to read from Isaiah chapter 8, we'll read into Isaiah chapter 9 and avoid the confusion, the distraction of the fragmentation. All right? Okay. I will read from verse 19. Just stay with me. Stay with me. All right? See, it's, um, it's a journey. And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits and unto wizards that peep and mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead, to the law and to the testimony? If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. If you check the tone of the presentation in this scripture, you will find out that there were alternatives apart from Jehovah that had entered into the realm. In fact, and there were agencies in the territory that were marketing witchcraft, marketing um, warlocks, the capacity of warlocks, and why you need to patronize necromancers that bring testimony through familiar spirits from the dead you there so he says should not a people seek unto their own god then the next verse which is verse 29 gives us the acid test to show that you are a follower of god he said to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Once, okay, he ascended many times. Yes. One of the times that you may not have considered is that when Mary came weeping 
in the garden. Because the reason why it was in the garden is because the destiny of humankind was sold out in the garden. So the destiny of humankind had to be contended for in a garden. And when Jesus rose from the dead, Mary refused to leave the tomb site and she was weeping. Even though Jesus was in transit to heaven, he had to stop and come attend to Mary, but he instructed that she should not touch him because he has not yet ascended to his father. So there were many ascensions, private ascensions that Jesus made. The reason was because he was in custody of a heavenly body. That heavenly body is not modified to be trapped into space and time for long. Are you there? So there were many times during the interval of these 40 days that he ascended and and that's why he gives them appointments because he will need to ascend. That's his, that's his original habitat now in view of the body. You know, I don't have time. I don't have time to walk it out. Do you still remember Elijah? And Elijah was raptured into heaven without death. And that's the reason why he will have to come back. When you come under pressure, because the way God created us is that he created us insufficient. And it's not obvious, the way we are sitting here, it's not obvious that we are insufficient. Because see how handsome bro brother Luke is looking. So handsome. It's when he comes under pressure, when he collides with a situation that is orchestrated from the realm of the spirit, that is when you will see the fact that he is inadequate. And God deliberately created us that way so that we'll find out that in order for us to get by, you need external support. That's the insight David had when he said, I will look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. You know, he must have tried again and again and have seen the futility of the ability of the flesh. Now he has come to the knowledge of the fact that that which was designed to complete him is not with him. It is, it will come from the hills. It will come from the heavens. So when you go to the book of uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 20, 26, the Bible says it's the spirit that helpeth our infirmities. So Paul had taken it further. That the agency of God that is saddled with the responsibility of swallowing up all our insufficiencies happens to be the Holy Ghost. So in the mind of God, a proper man is a man that has found partnership in the Holy Ghost. Because such a man is a personality whose insufficiencies are swallowed up. So he can he can retain the ability to do the works of God. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. You know I told you because of his glorified body he could only meet them on schedules of appointments. So this time the appointment was in Galilee. This time the appointment was on a mountain that he had appointed unto them. So they moved from wherever they were to head to Galilee because that's the place where the appointment was scheduled. Now, you must understand that anytime Jesus came to visit them on disappointments, he came with breaking news from heaven. Something has been decreed. Something has been spoken. And that which has been spoken is going to affect the landscape of their labors in the kingdom of God. So Jesus came to give them breaking news. 
Now, during the course of this weekend, what we'll be attempting to do is to check out the breaking news that Jesus brought. And they shall pass through it, hardly be stead and hungry. And it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves and curse their king and their God and look upward. And they shall look unto the earth and behold trouble. I'm still reading from Isaiah chapter 8. And darkness and dimness of anguish and they shall be driven into darkness. 9 verse 1. Nevertheless, you see, it's a continuum. The dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation. When at the first it lightly afflicted the land of Zabulon and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan. In Galilee of the nation. Stop there. Leave that scripture on the screen. This is the geography that I've been trying to explain to you for those of you that really uh, are following what I'm teaching. The region of Zabulon and Naphtali is by the way of the sea. It's beyond Jordan. It is called Galilee of the nations because when you are going international, you will need to pass through Zabulon and Naphtali to hit the sea so that you can go to the nations. So if idol worship is coming into Israel, it comes through that route. That's why the Bible says it calls them a people that sit in darkness. Are you there? So can we go back to our Matthew? It was the mention of Galilee that provoked me to start geography classes. Are you there? When idolatry comes, when foreign gods are imported, it comes through that corridor. So that corridor is known for darkness. That's the international side. They are liberals. Are you there? Alright, so, but when you go to the southeastern part, that's where Jerusalem is. That's its national. The other aspect is international. So the customs and traditions of the people are kept in the national angle. You don't make a convert from those guys. Because those guys are rooted in the tra traditions of the ancestors. Now among these two people, guess the ones that killed Jesus. The national people. That's Judea. Are you there? And then the other side is called what? Galilee. Oh, you're not following my teaching. Okay, let's go back to Matthew. Matthew chapter 28 verse 16. Meanwhile, after he revealed to them that all power, this is the status of heaven right now, all power has been given to me and the scope of the power is from heaven and earth. Alright? I will explain what that means. When he said that the next thing he now said, in view of the above, that was when he gave the great commission. Go ye into all the world in view of the fact that all power. You see, the things that are taking place in the heavenlies was going to affect the labor of the functionaries upon the face of the earth. Are you there? So, this insight that Jesus is bringing it's a very critical insight and Jesus had to smuggle it in because it's going to influence the outlook of their own mission upon the face of the earth did you get it to that point okay now 
I need to explain to you what all power is given unto me in heaven and earth means. Because if by any means you are not possessed with the understanding of this news that Jesus gave, it means it will affect your civilization as a Christian. Imagine if Jesus did not break through to bring this news, they would have been operating in a certain way that is not consistent with spiritual reality as secured in the heavens. So Jesus was determined to upgrade them and so he gave them appointment. Next verse. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. This is the same Jesus that if he's doing a teaching and there are people in the congregation that begin to sustain thoughts, thoughts that are contrary to what he's teaching. Jesus by the instrumentality of the gift of discernment of spirit will pick their thoughts and then he will condition his teaching to respond to their thoughts. That's, that's Jesus. Jesus of the Bible. So obviously when these guys doubted he, he knew but you see the errand, the message that he came to pass on this occasion was so heavy that he ignored their doubt. Jesus never ignored doubt. Never. In all of his ministry. When he senses any iota of doubt, he will rebuke it. But on this occasion, because of the gravity of the moment, this is the only time in his entire ministry that he looked away from doubt. They worshipped him. But some doubted. Next verse. Hallelujah. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. So this is the breaking news of heaven that he wanted to smuggle to them. You will now realize that after he made this, uh, meanwhile, I assure you, you don't know what this scripture means. I assure you. So just hold on. Just hold on. Just hold on. 